So yeah, boy, these have come on quick. This is only three weeks now since uh, they, or not even that, two and a half weeks since they, they hatched from their spawn, for want of a better word. And yeah, one thing's for sure, keeping them in a tank and feeding them on is a lot quicker than, uh, than in the wild because these guys are probably about a third of the way there now. Um, as you can see, they are doing really well. But having watched back the first video, I realized, and, and because there were a few questions, that I didn't really go over some absolute musts when you're doing this, and it's not something that should be taken lightly. So I thought I'd uh, show you how they're coming on and also answer a few questions and give you some advice, uh, some really important bits of advice. So one thing I should have really hit home on was that the fact that this isn't something that you should do um, without some good thought. It's not just a case of grabbing some spawn and putting it in some water. There are lots of different things you have to factor into it. Um, and while we're on the subject of water, the first one is the using tap water. Do not use tap water. I should have mentioned that. Tap water's got chlorine and amphibians obviously have, uh, they, they breathe through their skin and they do a lot of absorption through their skin. And, uh, and they're really susceptible to chemicals. And so if you are gonna use tap water, you can use it, but you have to leave it outside, uh, leave it out for a few days to allow the chlorine to evaporate off. But ideally, obviously, use water from the, the pond that you're taking the spawn from, um, or rainwater. While we're on that subject of taking the spawn, I've looked into this deeply because somebody mentioned, you know, is it illegal? That's a really good point. As far as I understand it, and I wouldn't do it unless it was, obviously you can take spawn out of your pond, um, but you cannot sell it. And that's, of course, why would you? So you can't sell spawn, you can take it from ponds, and a lot of classrooms do this for schools, And you, but you should never take it from different areas and introduce it together. Like I said on the first video, these two ponds that I took this from are very very close and almost certainly have the same frogs so yeah as far as far as i understand it and i did look into it i have looked into it in the past you can take frog spawn and do this as long as you're not selling it and you're looking after them and releasing them afterwards um with regard to the spawn when you are taking it you have to uh, this, this you have to allow for the temperature differences they're very susceptible to temperature differences, the frog spawn and the tadpoles. So you need to make sure that whenever you introduce one into another medium, uh, that you allow the temperatures to equilibrialize, if that's a word, equalize first. So just sit them down, you know, and, and um, next to, or, or float them in the water like you would when you're, use, when you're buying a fish from a fish store, you wouldn't just chuck it into the water. You'd let it equalize first. So temperature changes is another important one. I mentioned on the first video about bringing some plant matter from the pond as well and putting it in there. And that's for two reasons for that. Firstly, it'll get, it gives you a medium to, f to put the spawn on because the development of frog spawn requires sunlight and warmth. It's two most important things. Shady ponds generally don't do well uh, for frog spawn. Um, because and, and another thing they're susceptible to is late frost but you obviously wouldn't get that <clears throat> bringing it indoors but you you could uh, by its very nature have a tank indoors that wasn't particularly sunny this is why mine's right by the window you can see the light on the surface there um, the second reason for having veg uh, the plant life from the pond is that juvenile tadpoles are vegetarians and they will nibble on on plants uh, as long as they are suitable native plants. Having said that, you obviously need to feed them on as well. One of the, I've done a video about this and I did link it at the back of the last video if you want to have a look. I was trying all different food types and some with great success. But um, two really, really good uh, food stuffs that I didn't mention were boiled spinach and ground, dried ground nettle leaves, apparently. I've never used that, but apparently that's really, really good as well. And obviously as the tadpoles come on, they also transfer to a carnivorous diet. 
and there are, you can look online for this. I'm using um, just this goldfish, which seems to be doing really well, and they're, and they're having that now. And I haven't seen a single death in the tank um, or tadpoles eating each other, which will happen if you don't feed them enough. Two, two to three times a day is normal. I'll feed them in a minute for you once I've done a water change. As you can see, some of the spawn didn't um, hatch. Um, and it might be for any of the reasons I've mentioned, but there are about three or 400 tadpoles in here. So uh, generally a good success rate. When we're talking about ponds, I should have hammered home that I'm not gonna be overly releasing in back to my pond, because it is a macro pond. And if you have only a small amount of frog spawn or no frog spawn in your pond, there's probably a very good reason for it. I think mine is more of an artificial reason, which is why I'm doing this. But if you don't have a lot of frog spawn, you could have a shady pond, a small pond, or or a whole host of other reasons, there might be a good reason for it. So what you don't want to do is release hundreds of baby frogs back to it, and they'll have no nowhere to go, no food to eat, you know, not enough slugs or other things that they eat when they mature. Or, you know, if, you, if you've got a pretty a desert for a garden, you don't want hundreds of frogs there because it would, they'll just die. So you have to be realistic about how many you're gonna put back. And if, you, if you're bringing them on indoors like I am, you're gonna create far more than would survive in the wild because they you're only a fraction you know, mature to adulthood. So you have to be really careful. And this is another reason why this is not for the faint hearted. You shouldn't just do this uh, on a whim because the frogs will end up suffering. Whereas what I'm doing is gonna be taking a small handful of the frogs and putting them in my pond uh, for the diversity thing. And then the rest will go back to that huge pond which is just down the road. So hopefully <coughs> it will be a beneficial thing. But as you can see, the frog spawn at the back is now being consumed by them. So I'm limited, limiting their food because the best thing that they can eat is the, the jelly that they, they were born with. Um, and that's got smaller and smaller, that clump there. But as a result of that, you can see, there was a little shrimp there. Um, you can see that the water's, water is becoming really dirty it's not terrible at the moment but you do need to do water changes so every day every couple of days at first but then as they mature and they're creating more and more waste you really need to do it every day you need to do a water change so I've got a big jug here and a smaller jug and it's literally a case of scooping out um, one of those a day and replacing it with rainwater or pre prepared tap water as I mentioned earlier that's been sitting out open topped so the chlorine can evaporate off or if you've got the pond there straight from the pond so every every day now they'll have a massive about about a third of that water will get changed again when you bring the water in you've got to let it sit to because it's going to be from outside normally or from a tap which is colder you can't just pour that water in there because it will it could make them react to a, a big temperature change so i will do that later um, i will also put some fish food in there now so you can see there we go how they react to it i mean they're getting used to the fact that i've got fish food every day now so they're getting a bit spoiled but uh, you should see an increase on this side now <clears throat> but yeah they're doing really well but uh yeah it's as they get bigger it is a constant job to look after them and like I say not something for if your heart's not in it or you're not taking it seriously because they will suffer as a result I think but uh I will what I do now if you've got any questions I'm trying to think of other things that are really important but I think I've covered most of them but if there are any questions let me know and in particular about the legality because I have gone on DEFRA and, a, and some uh, f I think frog life I went on and in fact one of them I think it was frog life had a guide for keeping tadpoles indoors so it's obviously not something unless I'm missing something it's not something illegal but if you do find some evidence that points that way let me know because obviously I don't want to be doing that but I've done this before with great success and I, and I really don't believe it is so but having said that 
cruelty to animals is obviously illegal and if you're not doing it right there might be you know you, you could be going down that route so you have to do it with a lot of uh, research first <clears throat> but I'll leave you with them and as I do the water change and then uh, any questions please drop them in the comments and I'll uh, I'll do my best to answer them but the major points I feel I've, I've covered there um, particularly to do with you know the temperature uh, the chlorine in the water and um, water changes which I think are the three most and light and warmth if you can bear all that in mind you're, you're on the right path I'll leave them with you um, and uh, thanks for watching Thank you.